Um, from 1998 to 2014, the usual trend for Nigeria has been to grow uh, pre-election year and also in the election year. But we started seeing a new trend from 2015 when the economy started going down and eventually in 2016, the Nigerian economy went into a recession. Now, watching what we experienced in 2018, being the pre-election year to this year, 2019, it was expected that Nigeria would grow. So it was with huge expectation in first quarter 2019 with 1.91 uh, growth rate. But that went down in second quarter to 1.5. And in third quarter, it, it, it came up again. We're hopeful that we're going to have good report for fourth quarter. But all of this is, has been permanently lower than population growth rate, which was not the case in 2002, 2006, 2010, and in 2014. So it, economists, we are not uh, really shocked with this growth, uh, but we are just concerned that there might be no growth at all with an economy with over 3% population growth rate but it's been forecasted to have a population growth rate. But you see, beyond Nigeria, beyond what is going on uh, in Nigeria right now regarding politics, there are external forces which is providing us with negative externality, particularly what is happening between America and China, uh, both of which are our trading partners, and also Britain and Europe, which uh, of course is centered around Brexit. We also have a lot of uncertainty all around Africa, political instability, but starting with Nigeria, with what how our stock market is responding to elections this year, you will recollect that we've lost about over 30% of the value of stock market within a short period of time of about eight months. Uh, this calls for a lot of concern, and all of these have implications if the crude oil prices are not stable, uh, between $50 to $60 per barrel, with, wrong, with not particularly suitable uh, projection for a 2019 budget on, the, on one side. On another hand, we are managing struggling with market capitalization of about 11 trillion naira. Uh, America, on the other hand, has also borrowed about $2 trillion. So people wonder how that will affect it. It will because with 1% interest rate in America, uh, um, monetary policy makers is going to have negative implication on the Nigeria market because all with our 14% interest rate, all our foreign investors, particularly portfolio investors, might just disappear to America or into UK as the right. case may be. Well, let's break down the projections for the economy. And in, in this respect, I'm looking at the non-oil and oil economy. From the third quarter GDP numbers, we saw a contraction in the oil economy. My first question is, do you think there is a potential that we could see a recession in the oil economy in Nigeria? And moving on to the oil economy, I wanted to get your perspective on the trajectory for growth for the non-oil economy, given the relatively good performance we saw in the third quarter. Yeah, we, 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 there are serious indicators that not only Nigeria but the world may experience what, what happened in 2007 because the cloud of recession and economic quagmire is fully gathered. Uh, Nigeria perhaps may not be prepared, just like other African countries who obviously are not prepared for another economy recession. Of course, uh, they might not be prepared, but that will not stop recession from happening. It's only, it, will not only, it will not happen only if we do the right things. Uh, but from what we can see from local and abroad regarding economic uh, indicators, it is obvious that between June 2019 to June 2020, Nigeria and in fact the world may experience another local or global economic quagmire. All right, but speaking specifically to the points I mentioned, the oil economy and the non-oil economy, do you think that we could see a recession in the oil economy given the forecast for crude oil prices and, of course, the uncertainty around production in Nigeria? Yeah, uh, certainly, yes. Um, if uh, the refinery that we hope would have taken off, um, that should take off this year, uh, if it's not coming up, I'm talking about that uh, refinery in Lagos, that is to take more of the excesses of Nigerian crude oil. If that is not happen, happening, then Nigeria may have a recession in, in oil economy. And, uh, you know, oil economy is responsible, according to 2019 budget, about 54% of government's revenue, I'm talking about federal government now, and it's also responsible for more when it comes to our foreign exchange. So it's low in price, particularly in revenue, I beg your pardon. Revenue is a 
combination of output and price. So whatever the price is, between 50, 60, even if it's 75, with lower projection uh, for Nigeria, that means Nigeria may go into another recession because this economy is monocultural and it's largely dependent on oil. I know we have a lot of activity happening in GDP component uh, coming from non oil sector, but revenue at the end of the day makes a lot of meaning and makes a lot of sense. And all of that, most of that come from the crude oil uh, sector. So if anything happens to crude oil sector, it's going to have a serious impact on the entire economy. So right. what we see if Nigeria is, is said to produce, uh, is said to, to produce less than what we're doing now, it will certainly have negative impact on the economy. Right. And the IMF did mention clearly that the expansion seen in recent years appears to be losing momentum. And I think you are speaking to that point as well. But I want to speak to another point around debt and the impact of that on growth for Nigeria and perhaps other economies in sub-Saharan Africa. How concerned are you that, uh, if you like, the emerging debt trap that Nigeria appears to be entering could have an impact on growth moving forward? Debt is a burden. Uh, countries have to borrow anyway, see if they cannot re uh, realize in revenue what is expected for expenditure. Uh, but it's quick for people and government to say that the debt ratio to GDP is less than 20%. Uh, but we laugh each time we hear that uh, because the burden of debt is not just debt to GDP. It is debt servicing to revenue. Uh, for Nigeria, federal government will spend almost 60 naira of every one naira, every 60 cob, I beg your pardon, from every one naira received in revenue, which is the real issue. So with what is happening right now, uh, even though we may say we have collected so much in revenue, but we have to give so much in debt. And that is why with all the revenue we realize from crude oil, you see a lot of dividends on, on our infrastructure, starting with road and power supply. So the key issue is, how are we going to generate revenue? And I agree with President Buhari when he mentioned at National Assembly that the biggest challenge to this economy now is revenue generation. If you have enough revenue, gener if you have enough revenue generated, then you might say that you can take part of it to settle debt obligation or debt servicing obligation and not borrow any further. But with what is happening to crude oil right now and the prices, uh, output at the same time, which is contrast perhaps on both sides, it might not be good news for Nigeria at all. And if, if this continues, particularly based on the projection we're receiving from different headquarters, Nigeria might even go into recession faster than the rest of the world by second or third quarter of 2019. This calls for concern. I think this should be the, at the forefront of conversation by several presidential candidates of various political parties in Nigeria. The question is, how would you generate revenue to finance government if you emerge or when you emerge across popular and unpopular political parties? We are hearing less of that uh, coming from them. Some of them are not even aware of the new quota uh, given to Nigeria. Some of them are not aware, but people just want to be in office. That on its side, the global economy is also faced with a lot of challenges. You know, uh, as we speak now, the uh, World Economic Forum uh, is also concerned regarding the crisis between America, uh, economic war between America and China on one side, and also the borrowing of about two trillion naira on another side by the American government just in two years. They're also concerned that IMF is projecting lower growth rate for, for the globe yep. at about 3.5%. You know, all of these are concerns that we have implication and rub off on Africa and particularly Nigeria at the end of the day. All right.